Hello and welcome to this lecture on uh, introductory course on polymers. Uh, we are into week one and uh, the questions we are trying to address are uh, what is a polymer and uh, how do we describe these polymers and what are their unique features. So in this uh, second lecture, uh, we will learn uh, some basic nomenclature related to polymers and uh, what is their uh, chemical structure. Uh, we uh, will uh, look at uh, many of the lectures in this in uh, four broad modules and this is associated with the uh, concepts module of the course. What we will do in this lecture is uh, first uh, look at a uh, little bit more about the modules that we will follow in this course and then uh, look at molecular structure and uh, how do we describe these polymers. So just continuing on uh, from where I left off in the first lecture, uh, the modules are associated uh, with uh, four broad issues. Uh, the first one is related to concepts, where uh, we will learn uh, scientific and engineering uh, concepts related to polymers. An important aspect of uh, usage of these uh, polymers in uh, scientific and engineering applications is their properties. And here as uh, people working with polymers, we must be able to estimate and calculate properties, have numbers, play around with numbers, use the numbers. So that will be an important component of the course where we will look at quantitative uh, uh, and calculations associated with these polymers and their properties. Of course, these are important class of materials because they have pleasant as well as future applications. So not only do we need to worry about how to estimate or calculate, we also have to worry about how to apply or what is the application of these materials and the sustainability of polymers. So the uh, questions that if you look at uh, associated with the different modules uh, in uh, concepts we will learn to le try to learn why and how of uh, polymers. Why is its mechanical property, uh, why can strain be very high before it breaks. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, properties how much, how much does a rubber extend before it breaks, is it 10 percent, no in fact it can be as high as 600 percent. 800 percent strain. So which means it can become eight times its length. Of course it's not surprising you have always used a rubber band which can extend uh, uh, five to six times its original size. Now also where uh, is the application? What a property mix makes it very suitable for a given application? And if an application is not there can I think of a given material and then apply it in a new situation? And of course Finally, what do we do given the questions associated with sustainable use of polymers. So when we go down uh, several lectures in this course, these are the kinds of things that we will be discussing in each of the module. So uh, in uh, concept related things, we may discuss uh, things related to for example, uh, uh, an important uh, uh, concept uh, called glass transition which uh, makes the material very soft above glass transition and very hard below glass transition. Uh, the fact that a uh, pet bottle at room temperature is good enough to store uh, soda but at uh, 70, 80 degrees it will not at all be able to store the carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide will permeate from it uh, is a very important uh, concept associated with glass transition. Or uh, for example polymers uh, with ionic groups. In fact many of the macromolecules that are there in our body whether it is protein or uh, DNA they are all examples of polyelectrolytes. So uh, what happens when you have a macromolecule, a giant molecule with charges on it? The second set of uh, uh, lectures are associated with uh, properties and there we will look at properties such as conductivity uh, in terms of uh, uh, diffusion of small molecules like I mentioned carbon dioxide diffusing out of a pet bottle. Uh, if we are using uh, several materials together then their surface energies. So many of these properties, what are the numbers, how, how, why is it a polymer has a given surface energy or why does it have a given uh, conducting property or a resisting property and so on. So here we will look at very specific uh, number based uh, uh, 
calculations for uh, evaluating theoretically as well as from a practical consideration. And uh, in terms of applications, we will look at uh, various uh, different classes of applications from uh, sophisticated applications uh, like uh, energy storage and energy generation to something uh, which is more mundane in terms of day-to-day uh, -day use, uh, packaging applications uh, and so on. And of course, we will also spend a significant amount of time uh, looking at uh, sustainable use of these polymers and what makes uh, these polymers uh, challenging in terms of their sustainable use. So, therefore, uh, the lectures in this uh, course uh, will be, uh, as you can notice, uh, the current lecture is always uh, mentioned here. Uh, the uh, section which is being discussed is on the screen uh, and the slide number is also mentioned. And uh, so, you can follow uh, all the lectures by focusing on some of the messages which are there on the slide uh, in a very standard format. And uh, just to remind ourselves again, and this is something which cannot be overemphasized uh, while learning about polymers, is the fact that they are macromolecules or they are very giant molecules. And given that uh, this is their nature, uh, one of the first things we will start doing is learning about what is meant by a polymer, what is a polymer made up of. So, generally uh, the monomers is a single molecular unit which combines together to make a polymer. And so, for example, ethylene is the monomer for polyethylene. And uh, ethylene, as uh, most of you know, is just CH2CH2. So, polymer uh, uh, polyethylene would be written as CH2CH2 repeating itself several times. So, this is one nomenclature which we will have to get used to where we say the what is a polymer, poly, this is polyethylene because CH2, CH2 is repeated capital N times and so this is a chain of polymer. This is a macromolecule in which ethylene units have reacted with each other and uh, capital N of ethylene units have reacted. Another example of a molecule is PVDF. This is a very important uh, polymer for making strain gauge. That is why uh, I have referred to it as an electroactive polymer. Just search uh, what is meant by electroactive polymer. In fact, it is a very important class of materials uh, which is being uh, researched as well as applied in the last two decades or so. So, in this case, uh, if you look at the monomer, it is very similar to ethylene except that instead of uh, C and uh, hydrogens, you now have C and fluorine. Repeat it. And of course, you can clearly now notice that uh, from ethylene to PVDF, there is some similarity, but there are important differences. And uh, the reason uh, PVDF is an electroactive polymer is because of this. CF bond which is there and uh, this is very polar and all the electroactive properties associated with this polymer are related to this CF and clearly that is absent in case of polyethylene where it is only carbon and hydrogen bonds. Another example of a repeating unit for a polymer uh, is PET, which I have already mentioned is a PET bottle that we are very familiar with. This looks uh, somewhat different compared to uh, the polymers that I described already. In case of ethylene, we had the ethylene unit and the polymer looked very similar. So, monomer and repeating unit looked very similar. In this case, in fact, monomers are uh, have been combined, two monomers and uh, to form this ester bond. So, polyethylene terephthalate is a polyester. This you would have heard. In fact, a uh, lot of our clothing, uh, if it is not cotton, we call it polycot, is mainly polyester and cotton or just polyester. And uh, again, so polyester, not PET, 
but family of polyester wherever this ester bond is there because you can change many of these chemicals. In this case, this is CH2, CH2. You can have different units. In this case, there is a benzyl ring that can also be different. So you can get variety of polyesters. So in this case, monomers are diacid and diol. We will look at this again uh, in the course to come. If you have uh, N small, then we call it oligomer. You can look at uh, various words where wherever olig oligo is the prefix to it. It means a smaller number. If you look at the natural uh, macromolecules, macromolecules within us, what we notice is really diverse nature of these macromolecules. The, it's mind-boggling, in fact. Because if you look at uh, how the repeating units and monomers of either of these proteins, polysaccharides, or uh, molecules, uh, nucleotides, uh, which make up as polynucleotides as DNA, RNA. This uh, many of you must be familiar with. It's there in our hair. Keratin, it's a protein. You can look at uh, what are the monomers that make up keratin. And you will be surprised to see how diverse range. Hemoglobin, all of us are familiar with. You can look up also glycogen and chitin. These are two examples of uh, polysaccharides. And uh, what you will notice is unlike a simple case where I talked about uh, uh, polyethylene being made up of ethylene, in this case, the monomers and repeating units are actually complex. So you have uh, quite often uh, multiple monomers and therefore the sequencing of monomers is very important. So the question you can ask yourself is why does nature uh, have such a such diversity? Why is uh, sequencing of monomers so crucial. And uh, if you remember, uh, many of the biochemical uh, reactions which are going on, which are underlying feature of life, they are very specific. Each of these reaction is in response to a specific condition. And this is something can be achieved if you have this diversity. And so, Something related to macromolecules in uh, nature is very different compared to macromolecules of uh, synthetic polymers that we talk about. Let's uh, continue uh, looking at uh, this uh, nomenclature. Uh, so, uh, monomer, uh, as we say, is a building unit of a polymer. And uh, once the polymer is built, there is something which keeps on getting repeated. And uh, in case of polyethylene, the monomer and the repeating unit are same. And uh, in these type of polymers, uh, what there's an active center. So ethylene, which cannot really react with itself, uh, will have to be activated. So monomers become active centers due to initiation. So when we add an initiator, which can be a free radical or it can be an ion, once this is added, then monomer becomes activated and then this activated monomer can start combining with other monomers. But in such uh, a, a set of polymers, the monomers and repeating units are identical. But uh, in other cases, like we saw in, for PET or other polyesters, for example, polyester is formed with a molecule which looks like a diol. Diol means two hydroxyl groups. And a dicarboxylic acid, which uh, implies a molecule which has some group and then carboxylic acid, but two of them. And so these are called functional groups. And uh, in this case, the monomers are a this diol and uh, dicarboxylic acid, when they react, you have a polyester bond formation and the repeating unit, because the reaction happens and water gets eliminated in this case, the repeating unit looks different compared to the monomer itself. But again, as we saw earlier, so the repeating unit is continued to be repeated throughout the polymer chain. So important thing to note in all of this is 
functionality. The monomer which is being added or the reacting species which is being added, how many times can it react? So we saw that diol and dicarboxylic acid can react two times. So these are examples of bifunctional materials. And here you can ponder over this uh, question. Uh, for example, what is the functionality of allyl alcohol? But look at the other part of it. The question is also asking specific. So clearly functionality is a concept where you have to think of how many different ways can a molecule react. So just think over this question uh, before you go any further. Just pause and think as to what your answer is for allyl alcohol functionality. Let's continue uh, on our uh, journey to define uh, some of the nomenclature associated with polymers. So polymers we will refer to as a chain because it's one building block keeps on repeating itself. It's like chained together. Monomers are chained together. And of course uh, the end of uh, the polymer is uh, uh, the either an initiator molecule or it's uh, either a carboxylic or hydroxyl group in case of polyester. So end groups are important and then we'll also define what is called the degree of polymerization. What is the length of polymer basically? And uh, while we are doing this, uh, a question that you can think of is uh, how do we really establish that there is a chemical reaction and a polymer is being formed due to a covalent bond formation? So for example, in case of uh, polyethylene, we have CH2CH2 repeated itself and between uh, two ethylene molecules, this covalent bond is being formed. And we will also soon become familiar with drawing polymers like this, implying that it's a long chain of polymers and I've just shown two repeating units here. So the question you can think of is if I have styrene going to polystyrene, how do I establish that actually styrene has indeed covalently bonded with another set of styrenes and I have got a linear chain of styrene which are all together covalently bonded. And in fact, this question is very important because this was what scientists and engineers grappled with 100 years ago while trying to establish concept of macromolecule. And it's not trivial. In fact, you can try to read the history and see how some people try to argue that, you know, styrene molecules just agglomerate with each other and therefore the solid styrene which looks like is a colloidal form of aggregated solid. And then came along other set of scientists and technologists saying no, styrene molecule is reacting with another styrene molecule to form a macromolecule and therefore liquid styrene becomes solid styrene due to macromolecule formation. And it's a very exciting story as to how people went back and forth and established the macromolecular nature of these polymeric systems. So let's continue uh, in terms of looking at the further terminology. So given that uh, the polymer chain uh, is uh, uh, going to be uh, our central concern, uh, the chain itself we will refer to as backbone also. And uh, we will call it backbone because around these backbones several other things can we talked about. One example is side group on a polymer chain. For example, uh, we saw that for polyethylene, uh, the uh, groups were only hydrogens. But if instead of a hydrogen, I replace it with a methyl, then that becomes propylene. Rest are all still hydrogen. So then this is polypropylene I can make out of propylene. So you can see that there are several different uh, possibilities with very similar uh, double bond uh, uh, associated uh, molecules. Let me just draw this to indicate that this is a polymer part of a repeating chain because the monomer itself will have double bond. Because the chain is formed, now the double bond is not there and there is single bond in a polymer chain. So if instead of a methyl, if I have a carboxylic acid, then I get polyacrylic acid, which is an example of an ionic polymer or a polyelectrolyte because we have an acidic group uh, which is there reacted on the backbone of the polymer chain itself. And uh, 
as I mentioned earlier, the question is uh, what could be at the end of the chain? So end of the chain could be an initiator, it could be a functional group. And so many times to measure molecular weights using chemical means, these end groups are very useful because we can count the number of end groups and then we can see, uh, we can find out how many macromolecules are there in the system. One of the important things related to macromolecules is its degree of polymerization or how many repeating units are there in a polymer. And we will denote in this course using capital N and it's also called the degree of polymerization. So molecular weight of a macromolecule is basically the molecular weight of repeating units times this N. And uh, in this course, we will refer to uh, this molecular weight uh, according to the current scientific terminology as molar mass. But in industries or in many common parlance, uh, you will use molecular weight also. So molar mass is what is formally now it is called, but molecular weight is also used by several users. One important feature which we will have to become very familiar with is the fact that there will be a distribution of molecular weights or molar masses in a polymer. When I take a bulk sample and look at different macromolecules, each macromolecule will have or can have different N. And this is again where synthetic polymers differ from many of the natural polymers. And uh, so because if you look at a protein, its molecular weight is fixed. And uh, uh, if I take a bulk uh, sample of protein uh, solution, all the proteins will have same uh, molecular weights. Protein molecules will have the same molecular weight. But in case of polyethylene, when I make each macromolecule of polyethylene may have a different molecular weight. And so, of course, some of this we will learn as to why there is a distribution of molecular weights by looking at polymerization uh, techniques and uh, the statistics of polymer formation in case of polymerizations. One important uh, structural feature which these macromolecules have is what's called molecular architecture. If we just have a single room, then uh, it's just going to be a square uh, block, cubical block. But if we have a building, then we can talk of architecture. How are rooms arranged? What is the uh, accessibility from one room to the other? Uh, what is the, how is the utilities available from one room to the other? And that's the architecture. How about the appearance of, and so same way in polymer, monomers are the building blocks through which a polymer chain is made. Now, what is the architecture for this particular macromolecule? So one important uh, architectural uh, uh, variety is in terms of branching. So uh, one thing which we will continuously do in this course is start drawing curves like this and then uh, understand from them that this is a polymer chain being drawn. And what I have drawn here is a linear polymer chain, which implies that it's possible to get a branched polymer chain. What will that look like? There will be branches which are growing from the backbone. Now you can also see why something is called the black backbone. So in this case, the black uh, curve which indicates uh, the backbone while the blue uh, curves indicate the branches which are there. And of course, if you zoom in to any one small segment, you might see, so for example, if this is a polyethylene chain, then uh, somewhere uh, very up close, you will be able to see all the molecular details. And similarly, if it, even the branches are uh, polyethylene, then if you zoom in, you will see that again, the same repeating unit. So branching in polyethylene is one of the most important uh, structural features. In fact, uh, you can uh, uh, make uh, storage vessels or pipes out of polyethylene. Uh, you can make a very uh, flexible uh, grocery bag kind of things. Or you can also make uh, stronger uh, bags, which are, for example, milk bags. And so the same polymer can be used in variety of applications depending on whether it's branched or not branched and what kind of branching does it have. The D here refers to density. So we have high density polyethylene, 
low density polyethylene and linear low density polyethylene. Uh, if you look at poly uh, HDP itself, uh, it uh, will look uh, something like this, which is a linear polymer with uh, maybe some small uh, branches on it. If you look at LDP, it has long as well as lots of branches, while LLDP has controlled set of branches. The number of branches is also controlled and the length of each and every branch is also controlled. So clearly, uh, when we try talking about branching and uh, backbone in the material, for branching, we need to know the number of branches as well as length of branches. And then uh, depending on uh, what uh, is uh, what are these uh, features, we can see different types of polymers being generated. Not just branching, there are various types of architecture possible in polymers. And uh, for example, you can have uh, the polymers in a network. So a macromolecular chain can be covalently bonded to another polymer chain. And so what you can generate therefore is a network. In fact, uh, rubber looks like this. It's a cross-linked network of macromolecules. And in fact, it's elastic properties. The fact that we can stretch a rubber band and we leave it, it comes back, is because of this cross-linked network. So network is an important uh, aspect. Uh, the other key word that I used is cross-link. So whenever we say something is cross-linked, it implies that a network is formed. Cross-link is nothing but wherever the molecules, macromolecules are joined together. We can also have hyperbranched polymer, which means the number of branches is just too much. In fact, I leave this as an exercise to you to just search uh, on the internet. Uh, if you search saying hyperbranched polymer or if you look for LLDP, you will clearly see how the molecular architecture is very different compared to a linear macromolecule or HDP, let's say. And uh, other aspect, uh, we can have uh, very different comb, for example. And can you guess as to how a comb macromolecule may look? And you should be able to guess that because as the name suggests, there may be a backbone. And then on this backbone, there will be branches, but arranged in so, such a nice manner that it looks like a comb. Now, I have drawn them in two different colors to indicate that they could be two different monomers. The black ones could be one set of monomers, the blue ones could be another set of monomers. Or they could also be both set mon same monomers. You can also have star. Again, what does star mean? Basically, macromolecules growing out like a star from a single point. So you can see there is a very rich variety of molecular architecture which is present. And uh, through polyethylenes, we already know that this molecular architecture is very important because it determines what the uh, properties of these polymers will be and where can they be used. And other feature given that we have such long macromolecules that we need to remember is many times the overall macromolecule may not be able to move or its properties as a whole macromolecule may not be important. So soon we will also start looking at macromolecules like this, where there is one macromolecule, then there is another macromolecule, uh, they are all entangled like a bowl of noodles. And uh, in such cases, what we will see is uh, what's important is not the overall macromolecule and what it is doing, but maybe some small part of the macromolecules and what it is doing. And uh, an important therefore phrase which we should remember is what's called a segment of a polymer. Basically, it's a small unit of macromolecule which can move. So the fact that uh, cross-link rubber can stretch is because what segments can stretch and so on. So with this, we come to the close of uh, this particular lecture on uh, the structure of polymer molecules. Uh, just to uh, uh, talk about the question which was posed on slide number nine, you know, allyl alcohol, uh, what is its functionality? 
And uh, if you see, it's a vinyl monomer with double bonds. So just like ethylene, it can react at both ends and form a chain. At the same time, this R group also has a alcohol group. It's a single alcohol group. So therefore, it can react with acid. So now you can go back and look at the question carefully and then see what is the functionality as far as reaction with carboxylic acid is concerned. So clearly this molecule has functionality of different kinds. If you think of this double bond reacting, there is a functionality. If you think of this R reacting, then there is functionality. And so that's a trick question in trying to ask as to what is the functionality of allyl alcohol. The question that you should be asking is tell me with respect to what. And so the second part of the question was with respect to reaction with carboxylic acid. And so the answer you can find out. So thank you and we'll meet again in the third lecture of this series. Thank you.